One of my favorite quotes uh, from uh, Martin Luther King Jr. is, the soft-minded man always fears change. He feels content in the status quo and has an almost morbid fear of the new. For him, the greatest pain is the pain of a new idea. Martin Luther King Jr. Yep. And, and what, they're, what they're now talking about is that what they call manufactured happiness or, or synthesized happiness is actually real happiness. According to the chemicals and the triggers in the brain, um, there's no difference between what people consider real happiness. So real happiness to people would be getting what they want and then they'll be happy. And they think they're not happy because they're not getting what they want. They're not getting, the, they don't have the spouse that they want, the car that they want, the job they want, the income they want, the kids they want, the body they want, and they're waiting for happiness. And what science is showing is that made up happiness, meaning acceptance, joy, gratitude, is, creates in the brain, according to science, the same chemicals and the same triggers. So that a guy who was wrongly accused and spent 30 years in prison can get let out and he is, uh, he's calm. And in fact, a majority of those cases that happens to guys, uh, men and women, I would think, uh, but I've only, I've heard about three stories of, of different prisoners that happened to, we're talking 20, 30 years. And they're, they're just, you know, they're totally reposed and accepting of what happened and they understand that in the chaos of the world, uh, you know, things go wrong. People have agendas and egos, and although there were corrupt judges and cops and lawyers involved, they've forgiven everybody. They don't want to hang on to it, and they want to move on. Now, people would say, well, yeah, he's happy, but that's fake happy. He had to be happy. He was forced to get along with that awful situation because the cops lied on him. He ain't really happy. Well, when science straps him up, and measures him, they're saying, sorry, the blood, the chemicals, the sparks in his brain match exactly what would happen if somebody won the lottery. It is real happiness. It can be achieved in any situation you're in. And so that's, that's the whole sort of new fight um, because it really goes against everything we believe. Imagine being satisfied with what you have. Our entire uh, uh, America collapses because America lives and breathes on dissatisfaction, on, on not liking this dress. I've had it for a week. Fuck this dress. My hairdo is like four days old. Fuck this hairdo. My Nintendo is uh, a year old. Fuck this Nintendo. I got to scuff on my shoe. Fuck these shoes. Yeah. On and on and on and on. Um, this thing has a crack in it. I need another one. And so um, we've been born and bred, especially in this country, hardcore, to believe that happiness comes from external things. Happiness arrives in your life if you are in the right position at the right time. It will arrive. And that's the bullshit that evangelists push. Right. Well, I say I like what you liked about the, the brain is the happy factory. That's what science is finding out, that, that it has, since we've evolved, the new parts of the brain seem to deal with calming us down and getting us to be another animal besides a jungle creature. And so when uh, we can, there's, a, there's a something that only humans can do. We can make up a scenario and come to a pretty good conclusion on how it would end, out, end up. So we can fantasize. And we can solve problems that don't really exist. Like, Travis, you come to me, hey, I want to start a, a, a you know, biscuit and, and uh, fried food uh, restaurant business. I go, okay, that sounds grub. What, what's, what's it going to have? He goes, well, it's going to be... You have pita bread. It ain't going to have no fucking chicken in the motherfucker. Come on now. This is my fantasy. No, no, no. I say, it's biscuits with everything else. I go, what? I go, I'm going to have liver and, and tangerines on one, right? I'm going to have uh, uh, carrots and uh, salt fish on one, and I start going, man, I, I don't know what these sandwiches would look like, but just telling me the ingredients, that shit sounds awful. Like, I'm able to guess because I've had carrots, I've had salted fish, I've had sauerkraut, I've had toasted bread, and when you tell me I want to make a new restaurant on these 
types of foods, I can say, ooh, that sounds delicious, or oh, gross, that, that sounds bad. And only humans are able, able to do this. That process, you've got to practice. You've got to, like, make happen, or else it'll just go away. It won't be part of your uh, human evolution. You, you've got to say, this kid is crying, he has no shoes on. Okay, if I was a kid and crying, it's probably because something bad happened to me. If I was alone, I probably would be scared. And you can run the scenario and then react on it with a pretty high level of guessing, like, okay, this kid needs shoes, some food, and we need to find his parents. All that you can guess at, where animals can't do that. And when you do that, it's going to lead you to a more compassionate, even-keeled, loving, thoughtful, and calm person automatically, because science says those two will come together. Just like lifting weights comes with muscles, intelligence comes with calmness. It, 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 it's a byproduct of it. So, You're right. You think about think about all your science, uh, your space movies. The the scientific guy is always has to be the calm one because he has to be the one that figures out where everybody else is going. We gotta get it really fast. We need some help now. And he's like, Hey man, just a minute, man. I'm, I'm I almost got it. You're right. You're right. Calm down. Let's let's run the numbers. Everyone relax. Like it's it's that, not about. That's why Spock was that character. That's why Spock was that character in in, in Star Trek.